All right, uh, critique time. So today I haven't faced a uh, well. I have faced one boss, you know. It was the boss that we were facing last time that we started the battle and we finished. It was for the Pompkus, and I could just do an art critique on the Pompkus. Pump but we have done already on so many of the arcade bosses. We have done it for the the Glob, the Robo, the Phoenix. I don't remember if I did it for the Bosch. I think not. I have done it for Toton. So I wanted to, and I wanted to take this opportunity to critique a cool enemy that we faced today, even though it's not a boss, and not even a big enemy, but which is the Drowned Fallen. Well, well, either one of the Fallen, I, oops, either one of the Fallen, I think, are cool enemies to critique. And so I think today is a good opportunity. So it's don't go always on arcade bosses all the time. Okay, so that's uh, the disclaimers for the critique as always. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about game design, but I'm not gonna delve, delve too much into it, just when I feel it's necessary. I'm gonna focus more on the visuals. And also, uh, I'm gonna be using Feldman's method for this art critique, which is about four steps in order, the description, then analysis, then interpretation, then evaluation or judgment, either name. Uh, on the description I'll describe what I see, on the analysis I'm going to get into the elements of art, on the interpretation I will interpret the creative vision behind the art, and on the judgment step I'm going to take a look at the principles of art and use those to base my judgment of successful or unsuccessful work of art. So let's begin! First things first, description, what do I see? So it is some sort of mage knight, right? Because it has like this armor and stuff, but at the same time it has a staff and this sort of robes. Uh, also there's some sort of gem at the end of the staff thing, I don't know if it's an emerald or what. We can't kind of see inside the armor and it's kind of a Rayman character, right? It has no arms. Which wouldn't make sense, but uh, if you just read the lore, the, it's a haunted armor of a battle mage. We, we, this is not part of the description, but you know. Uh, so just so we don't get confused. <laughs> this is gonna matter more the interpretation, the title, the description, but anyway. So yeah, just describing, yeah, it's this sort of mage uh, uh, knight thing. There is the, like, uh, I don't know the name of this thing at the back of a helmet, <laughs> uh, like a horse tail or something. What else? Uh, there is some sort of symbol on the robe, I guess, but uh, it looks just like some sort of gem, shouldn't tell as much. Anything else? It has another gem on the, this part here. Um, not sure there is much else to say for the description. Yeah, it's... Uh, that's that. So let's move on to the analysis now. So for the analysis this time, uh, I st I'm not do going each one of these one by one. I'm, just, I'm doing things different now. So I'm just gonna take a look at the elements that I see most notable here on parts of them. And to remind you, I'm gonna be considering as elements of arts points, lines, shapes, forms, space, texture, color, and value. So, let's see here. Uh, I think color is an easy one to call attention. First things first, we have like shades of green and blue. Uh, on the arm, shades of green on the armor and uh, more of a teal. Either a teal or... No, it's a blue, I guess. On the robes and the horse tail thing. And also another shade of green for the emerald, right? We could mention the lines of the art here. There is... Let's see. In general, regular thickness to the lines of them are black, as I see it, and uh, a lot of curvature on many parts. You can think of like the helmet, the robes, the gloves, the armor, the uh, horse tail. So a lot of use of curvature on many parts of it. And uh, but also, it's not exclusive. We also see a number of like straightness, especially on the staff. 
somewhat on this part of the helmet also uh, and some and then a number of edges also on the gloves, gauntlets maybe of the drowned and fallen the, also on this part of the armor but a lot of curvature also and very smooth curvature I would say for lines what else? For the element of space, we have an interesting case here, right? Because there is a space between the hand and the shoulder pad of the armor, which uh, is what I have been saying, it's a Rayman kind of character. Um, so that's an interesting use of space there, but other than that, not much to talk about, I suppose. Uh, the rest is like somewhat tightish use of space, there is like some between the helmet and the shoulder pad. Inside the helmet, apparently there is some use of space there. What else? Uh, mostly that, I would say, and some between the staff and the, the character itself, naturally. Uh, what else? Let's talk about uh, forms and shapes. For forms, a lot of roundish forms on it. On the armor, so the armor has a lot of roundishness to it, I would say, on the helmet also, but in general it's like pretty smooth to me. Maybe the shoulder pad's not that uh, round, but I don't know. Still, I think it... Mm, mm. I don't know... Yeah, now I would say it's not as round as the helmet for the forms of it, but it still has a certain degree of curvature. Three-dimensional curvature, I suppose. Uh, also on the hands. There's curvature there, and we see all these like wavy... It's... Okay, maybe I'm thinking of textures if I say wavy folds. The folds are more of a word of texture. Uh, speaking of textures, we see most, I see mostly it, and I guess a little bit of some imperfections or dents on the armor, some dirt, a little bit of it. And a very translucent and irid and uh, translucent and shift texture on the crystal. But anyway, back to farms, because that's what we that's what we were talking about. So if the folds are I, th I think uh, kind of the textures of it, the farms here. Uh, I mean it wouldn't be far off to say it's also somewhat the farms of it, but I would say it has this like uh, you know, it has like a, lar a larger base and then it gets a bit, it keeps getting shorter as it go up, so it has like this dress, kind of uh, the forms of a dress, or the robes of the following, you know, it's, it's basically clothing. If this is fabric, uh, you can think like that. What else? Uh, also some very unique <laughs> uh, curvature for the horse tail here. What else? Uh, for shapes, also. For shapes, we have like the thin ones for the staff, naturally, as we could expect. Uh, again, some very smooth curvature on the shapes of the. Um, of the robe thing. By the way, shapes are 2D and forms are 3D when it comes to art critiques. Um, because in real life you can say like the shape, the form or something are roughly the same thing, right? But that's the difference when I talk about art. But in any way... Uh, what else for shapes? Mm, some like unique ones for the shoulder pads. The gloves have, you know, as you would expect, we have like these protrusions for the fingers. So it's a hand. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, I would say like... Curve, a lot of smoothness and curvature is pretty noticeable for me on, on this art. Even on, on straighter parts like this part of the helmet, uh, it's still somewhat smooth and curvy, a little bit. And uh, I, may, I might as well mention points. The points are, as, is, as you can see many times, uh, they're kind of working with, with the textures of the dirty or somewhat bent parts of the helmet. Probably not bent, just like dirty or imperfect. There's like some on the shoulder pad, I suppose, also. Just like two points here. Yeah, so that's mostly it for points. They're all, I think, either black or gray, maybe, on these ones up here. And finally, for value. So for value, it's an interesting thing here. Um, 
We see a lot of brightness on this left side and uh, more shader parts here on the with, with what would be the back part of the drone that fallen. And it's a bit shader also on this part. Uh, and what else? Uh, we can also see here some brightness on the left and a little darkness to the right. So I haven't mentioned stuff like this before for a better fantasy art. And yeah. Uh, and other than that, I would say it's pretty like clear the way the value of light and darkness was used here. It's pretty like uh, gives a lot of clarity to the drawing. Drawing, I would say the sh the, the chosen shades of of color to convey light and darkness and uh, the way it's applied. It's a very very bright uh, style, I would say. Anything else for the analysis? Uh, I mentioned points, line, shapes, forms, space, texture, color... Yeah, no, I have uh, given a slight stroke and all of them. So, let's just move on to the interpretation now. Now we can do the easy part of looking at the name. <laughs> it's the Drowned Fallen, the haunted armor of a battle mage. It attacks with wind spells, but we also use water spells if wind's not effective, yada yada. So, first we can always go with the easy part of it and say this is a an enemy for it was designed as an enemy for epic battle fantasy 5 i don't know any i don't think this is an, uh, a reference to any other enemy much like uh, where is it much like the shibi knight which is a reference <laughs> but uh, drowned fallen i believe was designed as an enemy for epic battle fantasy 5 even the shibi knight was also designed but you know that's the, the Chibi Knight also is an enemy, but he's also a reference, but in any case... Um, the important task this was intended, that's what I'm trying to say. That's part of the idea here that I'm interpreting. So, enemy for Epic Battle Fantasy V. Uh, what else? So, let's go to the more easy part, right? There's the idea of the Drowned Fallen, Haunted Armor, Battle Mage. So considering the name and the other class of enemies, the Fallen, they all have like... Uh, this is pretty subtle, that's why I like this kind of enemy so much and why I chose them for the critique. All of them have some sort of story behind them, if you look at it. Uh, this one was a clever engineer and he's a burned Fallen. This one is a Viking explorer and he's a lost Fallen. This one is a crucified Fallen and it was a holy knight. This one was an outlaw and it was a beheaded fallen. It even the head floats. And this one was a battle mage and it was a drowned fallen. So there's always some sort of story behind how they died, basically, as I interpret. Which I think it's pretty cool and pretty subtle and it's not even like uh, hand fisted to you on the description. It just says, oh, it, it is the haunted armor for a battle mage. And the, through the name, you can kind of infer. Well, the, this little story, you know, and that's what I'm going to say for this interpretation. I interpret that uh, this was supposed to convey the story of uh, of a battle mage who died drowning, you know, of someone. But in this case, we can even say a battle a battle mage who dry, who died drowning. So pretty cool. Uh, and uh, you know, not that not that obvious. Just look at it, because if you look at it, if you don't look at the name, you're gonna miss that kind of stuff. So that's why you gotta always take everything you can to account for the interpretation. <laughs> you know, for the interpretation, the more you know about everything in the universe, <laughs> the, the, the the more the better your interpretation is going to be. <laughs> No work of art. Naturally, you're not gonna. Nobody know, can know everything, you know. But uh, yeah. Uh, in any case, what else? So, enemy for the five. The to convey this story of some metal mage who died drowning. Uh, we can also look at the game design of it. There is like the whole. The whole idea of you using wind and water spells, which can kind of easily follow ties to this idea of someone who died drowning, right? But let's see here if it makes sense to, to just leave it at that or have another idea. 
Uh, it is weak to ice in the elemental resistances. Has affinity to water and wind. Okay, makes sense. Uh, weak to holy, affinity to dark. So we can like infer and come up with some explanations for all of this, right? If we want. Although some are harder than others. Resi immune to thunder, for example, I don't know. And then the stats resistance also depends. I don't know. You can like come up stars. Ah, like, ah, maybe it's immune to weak and tired because it's an animated piece of armor, so it has no, no muscle, it's just dark magic making it move, I don't know. But, uh, ah, okay, yeah, that's a good, a good idea, actually. Uh, not that well tied to the game design. But when we say it's a haunted armor of a battle mage. Buenas noches, Kevin Dom. Uh, to you too. Como uh, disse que tu leva? I'm alright, hope you are too. So, okay, so this third idea for the interpretation of the creative vision here will be that this is supposed to be a haunted armor. Also considering so other stuff that we see here, right, I think that makes sense. The idea that it uh, has affinity for dark damage, immune to death and doom, curse and bad luck, and the stuff that I said. So, another idea was the, that I'm going to interpret, that's, that this enemy was supposed to be a haunted armor, some sort of uh, animated armor, stuff like that. Uh, okay, cool. Anything else for this enemy? Or... There is... Okay, so there is this stuff that it attacks with wind and water. The fact that it attacks with water, I think, follows very nicely, easily with the idea of someone who dies, died drowning. I don't know if I would consider a separate idea here. Uh... I guess I could say something like, ah, part of the creative vision was to make an enemy which attacks with wind and water, you know, and see if that ties to the design visually. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think it might have some redundancy with the idea of some, some character who died drowning, but uh, maybe not. I don't know, let's see. And maybe it's fine, we have already four ideas for the creative vision here, uh, the interpretation. Is there anything else that I could add, maybe? Mm, without uh, going too far, let's say, without uh, creating conjectures. Something that I have to have a base for. Uh, there's the drops, that and drops also. Steel plate, buckle, silver plate, uh, setting, something, I don't know. Mm, no, maybe it's fine. I'm gonna stick to those four ideas. So, to recap uh, the creative vision here, I'm interpreting that one, this was thought as an enemy for Epic Battle Fantasy V. Two, the idea this is a character, this conveys the story of a character who died drowning, a battle mage who died drowning. Uh, three, the idea that this is a haunted armor, piece of haunted armor, animated, or there's some dark magic involved, maybe. Something that, you know, stuff like that. And for... Um, uh, the idea that to make a character that acts with wind and water. And I just realized that maybe I could leave separate the idea of a battle mage and the idea of someone who died drowning. So... I don't know, but I'm, I think I'm gonna tie those together. So it's gonna make that part more specific, so it's about a battle mage who died drowning. Uh, and maybe it's fine. Maybe we could live separate, like someone who died fall, fall, who dr died drowning, and also a battle, and, and a separate idea, battle mage. But in any case, uh, okay. So let's just go to the final step of the art critique, the judgment step. So for this one. Uh, much like for the analysis, I'm not going to list every single principle here. Uh, let's. I'm just gonna see what I find most uh, strongly here. And if I can't find anything, then I'm gonna go list them to see if I can find uh, ways in which the creative vision tied to the principles of art, because that's how you say it's a successful work of art. Because the principles refer basically to how the author chose to use the elements. So if the out, what the author did is all about what the author tried to achieve, you know, that's why we call it successful. 
Anyway, the principles of art that I'm going to be considering for this critique are movement, unity slash variety, contrast, emphasis, balance, and proportion. So let's begin. Uh, and in this time, we can even just like downright uh, think on the interpretation already. So first things first, like the idea for an enemy for Epic Battle Fantasy V. Do you have anything, any principle that uh, helps convey that idea here? Let's tie to that. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> my bad. I burped internally. <laughs> so okay. <laughs> Balance, proportion, emphasis, contrast. I think there is some. I'm thinking on the on the illuminated part. I think there's some contrast, some amount of it between the illuminated parts on the left side and the shader parts on the right side of the enemy. And also, so we can also talk about the, the principle of unity, I believe, because there is like repetition in that sense. Repetition is one of the ways you can achieve unity. The principle of unity, by the way, is all about parts of the artwork apparently working together. And variety is kind of the opposite, but uh, both can help convey the vision. Anyway, so there's repetition in this. There's this like uh, pattern, let's say, of brighter brightness on the left side and shadiness on the right side. So both that and the principle of contrast, both of these, I think, uh, are ways to. Um, to make us notice, let's say, the brightness of it, and this is specific detail of left and right. And that, as I have always said of many other art critiques for this game, uh, that ties naturally to the game design of Epic Battle Fantasy V, because enemies are always on the right side of the screen, and the player characters on the, are on the left, so having something that conveys that visually, naturally tied to the vision here. Very easily. Um, what else? You could also say that uh, stuff like the element of space with the the space between the hands, you know, the fact that there are no arms here, and stuff like the proportions of this, this the proportions of it, the size of it, are similar to other of Fallen's, which are like a class of enemies of the Epic Battle Fantasy game. So they're in the game. So you know. Uh, and so is this one, but visually they are connected, and so another argument I think we could use to say that it's visually... They all are helping each other to be remembered, let's say. Stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, what else? Uh, and that in, f in fact that's why we... That helps a lot in saying that they are a class of enemies, you know, because they have these similarities in the visuals and other stuff like the names. But anyway, uh, what else? What about the idea of a, ah, a mage, a battle mage who died drowning? So this one ought to be interesting. Uh, we could, I could mention. Let's see here. I do believe there's a bit of the principle of movement on the robes, especially through value and texture. But that, that, by the way, principle of movement is all about how work of art can move your eyes, guide your eyes in some path or direction. And so I do see I do see a little bit of it on the robes, the way they are kind of wavy and go from up to down, that's how I see it. And maybe a little bit on the horse horse tail at the back here. There's probably a that's probably not the name of it, but I don't know. I'll Google it later. We don't need to do it right now. Uh, in any case, so I and, and what's that to say? So there's some bit of the principle of movement here, and tying that to robes, and like uh, on, on many, that's kind of a trope of mages using robes and uh, cloth armor because if they are not, if they are attacking with, uh, if they are attacking, if they are hand dealing with enemies and threats. Using magic, they ought not to care too much about protective armor, possibly, or something like that. And in either case, uh, mages in, lit in pop culture, a number of them uses robes. You can think like Gandalf from Lord of the Rings, you can think Merlin from the Arthurian legends, on, depending on the depiction that you see of him, but I think on most of them they 
uses some uh, robes or whatnot. Uh, what else? Harry Potter, they use robes in Hogwarts, you know. So, there's a lot of uh, representation of mages using robes, and I think uh, this, the, these robes here tie a bit to that trope, to that, uh, I don't know, stereotype maybe. But at least we can say the trope. Uh, not sure if uh, we, it's fair to call it a startup, but I do believe it's a trope, and yeah. And the Prism of Movement is tied to that, so, you know. So it is a battle mage. Ah, and we can... So that's a mage, but it says that it's a battle mage. And uh, in that sense, we can, we can mention the armor, you know. We have mentioned the armor, we could mention the repetition the shades of green for the armor, you know, there's repetition there, and specifically on the armor. So that's one way to help us. There is also green on these crystals, but they have a slight different shade of green there. And um, shiny texture to them. And so... There's some difference. Uh, and what else? That's mostly it. For, I was thinking on the shapes and forms. But I'm not sure it's fair to say it. But, all of that, but anyway, all of that to say that uh, if you're a battle mage, if you're going in combat, you might as well wear armor and cast your spells if you're <laughs> using your... If, you, you know, even you don't need to... Technically you can cast spells and wear armor, supposedly. Unless it's like on Dungeons and Dragons where it's harder to cast spells when you wear armor, so there is a deep, uh, penalty when you're on the tabletop game, you know. Dungeons and Dragons and uh, what, what else? Pathfinder, those kind of tabletop RPGs. But in any case, yeah. So the principle of unity here, repetition on the shade, on the color, I think helps us look at the armor and think it's a, possibly a battle mage. At least I don't can think of an easy uh, use for armor if it's not combat, you know? Or in any case, even if there are other uses, and there are, you could like use it to record a movie or whatever. <laughs> uh, but in any case, yeah, it's, I think it's an easy... It's very easily tied to this idea of, of battle, you know? Especially since we are not in the in the set here, <laughs> let's say, recording anything. What else? And so we have uh, some visual clues to, to communicate us, to tie this character to a battle mage. What about the idea of a uh, drowned battle mage, a character who died drowning? So this ought to be interesting. Um, I think it's mostly on the fact that uh, uh, it's mostly like on the color scheme, I suppose, and the game design, and the way it uses water spells and stuff. But like uh, the ocean is blue, you know, <laughs> and it has some. We have some uh, shades of blue here. Hablas español de casualidad. No, sí, pero no mucho, y, also, y también uh, uh, I, ah. Yeah, no mucho. <laughs> anyway, uh, I went, this stream is supposed to be in English anyway. Uh, where was I? So, yeah, okay, so the ocean is blue, water easily is often tied to the color blue, you know. And we see some uh, of it here, so there is some of that, but that shouldn't be enough, right? Because just because you're blue does it mean that you have something to do with water, that you die drowning, you know? So I think we still need more. And, uh, and there's the game design of it, the fact that it attacks with water spells. So a bit of it helps in-game when we see this character attacking, casting water on you. That's, I think, a stronger tie to it. Bueno, lo hablas bastante nice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, uh, I'm Brazilian, so we're not too far off. But, in any case, but we do speak Portuguese in Brazil, by the way, in case you don't know whoever is watching. Uh, on YouTube, because I'm recording it. Anyway. What else? Uh, so blue, I don't think it's enough, but there is like how it uses spells, uh, water spells in game. So with that consideration, maybe it's good enough, you know? Uh, let's see... There's also... 
I don't know, it's mostly that uh, Lastimus, Amentinus, Inglesus, Ariel, Gurgo, Track, Doctor. Um, okay, uh, you do what you... You do what you do, you do what you can, man. But in any case, um, where was I? Yeah, so basically we have the color blue and the rest is on the... on the game design of it. So... Uh, it's kinda... I think that might be okay, just having like repetition with the color blue, principle of unity and stuff like that. We could all, I guess we can also say the prism of movement being on the ropes and the ropes are blue. Why part of the game are you going? <laughs> Why part of the game are you going? Uh, I'm like... I'm about to get to the ice part of the map. I'm over here. and uh, But I'm not playing the game right now, I'm doing an art critique. I don't know if you understand this, but in any case... <laughs> Where, where, where was I? Um, okay. Well, I'm wondering here is if there is also the idea that it drops geode and uh, the color scheme here of the green. If we could tie that to anything underwater, coral reefs maybe. I don't know. I, there are some amount of that. I have seen many uh, videos where the ocean floor. Or the, if it's not too deep, where it's, everything is dark, but ha it has a shade of green. I wonder if that was also part of the idea behind this, to allude to that, the color of the sand underwater. I mean, for now you are just seeing the enemies. Yeah, I'm doing an art critique. Uh, eso es una crítica de arte. I don't know if I said that correctly, but uh, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, maybe also, like, if I'm correctly and the sand underwater is usually in a shade of green, then there is also the armor here. But yeah, uh, and again, the principle of, mo of uh, unity, and uh, what else? Uh, any other ones? Maybe contrast also, because there's contrast between this shade of green and the blue. It's not the strongest contrast, maybe, but in any case. Uh, what else? So yeah, all that's to say that, uh, okay, so we have like uh, some ways to communicate visually that this is a mage, this is a battle mage, and we have something to say that it's, that, that, that ties it to water, you know? Uh, are you criticizing Matt's recolors? Uh, yeah, Matt's design, yeah, basically, because he drew this, as far as I know. But in, in any case, um, I just wonder if it's r really fair to say that just having blue here is enough to call it a drowning. It's uh, someone who died drowning. Uh, a lot of it is tied to the game design, right? Uh, I don't know. Let's just move on for now. So, in any case, we still can say that it's a battle mage. What about the idea of a... Ah, haunted piece of armor. Ah, this one is easy, right? Because we have repetition on the... On the... On the lack of arms, let's say. On the use of space. That's what I wanted to remember. On the use of space. So, there being repetition here on the use of space between the arms. And... Uh, what else? Uh, and, and repetition means unity. Uh, maybe we could also mention the fact that it's all dark in here inside the armor. Which means that... Uh, this, was, this would be... Ah, I just realized that's an exception for the... I was talking about the principle of value, how I don't see... Ah, I didn't mention anything, like I don't see many dark places, but I should have mentioned that inside the armor seems to be dark there, right? With this, like, flash eyes. How would you improve the design? We're gonna get there, but we're just seeing if it is successful first or not. Uh, nosotros estamos vendo si es bem sucedido. Primero. I hope I said it right, I don't know. Anyway, um... Where was I? 
Uh, all right, so repetition on the user space here. Principle of unity. Uh, what about the other principles? Do I have proportion or contrast? Not sure if there is some amount of contrast here also. CSK. Uh, se, se obteve sucesso. I really don't know if I'm saying this right. Uh, se, a, se la arte obteve ten sucesso. In any way. Uh, where was I? Yeah, okay, so in any case, so this like being detached from the body easily, I think uh, it's, it's all about uh, an animated uh, piece of armor, haunted armor. Success to see. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so, the and so that ties well to the idea of a haunted armor. You know, because it keeps floating around, and we can see that visually through the principle of, uh, at the very, very least, unity. Mm, I'm not sure I would say contrast. Maybe a bit of contrast. Emphasis, I don't think so. Uh, balance and proportion. Uh, and movement, uh, yeah, so yeah. Okay, and uh, finally we have the idea of a... Ah, an enemy that casts water and wind spells. So, in here the color scheme matters a lot, because in this game wind is tied to this light green uh, shade, and water is blue. So, on the game design of this game, we see both of these colors, so, and again, repetition on the principles of on the color. Success, which happens especially when it is of some importance. Which happens especially when it is of some importance. Okay, I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, any, anyway, so because of the specifically the color scheme of this game, do I have skills that show it? I don't think I have the wind skill right here. I do have this one. Well, okay, it doesn't. Sh if you can look at the light stats effect, this is a wind skill that makes the enemy light. The light stats effect uh, and light enemies take more wind damage. Uses that light green for it. Uh, do I have? This area is on a shade of green, even though it's not that light. The Tornado Tantrum is on a light, sh a sh this shade of light green. So there is a lot of that uh, visual identity of this color with the wind element in this game. And so having the similar shade of it on the armor, I think ties very well on the wind, on the idea of casting wind spells for this game. And similarly to water, I can also, and this game is no exception, water is, is blue here. On this game as well, uh, tsunami. The icon is all blue, and it's what? Water is blue. Okay. Uh, in this game, no exception. Again, blue here. Uh, water were also a, bl a blue icon. The wet stats effect also. Where is it? The wet stats effect is blue. So we have that. Uh, we have that, you know, so very easily the colors, it's repetition. And the principle of movement, even though it's not the color, the element of color that's helping, I think event is not the word you were looking for, so I translated the meaning of event for you. Event? Uh, so I translated the meaning of event for you. Event, success. Is it? Ah, you know what? I'm gonna do you. Uh, uh, let me do it real quick just to help my friend here. Uh, I want to translate it real quick to Spanish. That's how it's success in Spanish. Éxito. Éxito. So. Uh, Yo estoy viendo, uh, analizando <laughs> si la arte tiene éxito. I hope I said that wrong. Yes, right. I hope I said that right. So, in any case, yeah. So we have this correlation between the color scheme of the wind and water. No problem. <laughs> no, no problem. 
And so, yeah, I, I was saying, like, their principle of movement, even though it's not true the element of color, but since we are, the principle of movement is on the blue robes, I think that's also helping us look at the blue robes. And, uh, yeah. There is that. And so, finally, uh, ooh, let me see something real quick. Ah, okay. What about, about the idea of the of this character having died drowning? I was thinking maybe it would be a, that, that was that wasn't good enough, just the idea that the character is blue and stuff. But I just realized something. We have this part of the armor here. Are you seeing if art is successful in what? Uh, just successful. Uh, see. Yeah, I would have to explain the vision. Simplesmente exito. Uh, se teve exito in the. Let me see. Objective. In el objetivo del artista. Se. Se. Se teve exito in el objetivo del artista. Basically that. So in any case, yeah, I was going to say, so there is this part of the armor here. I didn't mention it before, but there is some unique, uh, actually there is some unique use of lines here, it's a bit thicker there. So yeah, if I had listed every single element of art, uh, we could see this more easily. But in any case, uh, so there is some thicker lines on this part, and there is also, what would I call emphasis on it? Uh, where is the emphasis on this work of art? Uh, very hard to see a point of emphasis here. What is the objective in this case? Yeah, that's what we said in the interpretation. Um, Yo interprete. Yo interprete. Ah, nice. To be uh, is eso ser un enemigo. That it shows that is a drone. I mean, yeah, uh, for example, I still don't know if I'm saying this correctly. Anyone who's watching me on YouTube and uh, knows Spanish, uh, I'm sorry if I'm doing things wrong. Mas si, por exemplo, é outras coisas que estou hablando em inglês sobre. Yeah. Anyway, um, what else? I'm gravando isso a propósito. So, por isso estou falando inglês. Estou hablando inglês. Gracias. Where was I? All right, so. Uh, so, there is some use of lines here. Being unique lines very thicker on this part in comparison to the outline of the other ones gives some contrast to it. And maybe you already know what I'm going to say, but this is basically a unique part of the armor of the Drowned Fallen. And so, like, uh, we can naturally think about, uh, especially considering the name, we can think about uh, the idea that it maybe died out of air, or you know because he was drowning. <laughs> so because of this specific uh, detail on the, ar on the armor, I think uh, very easily we can think about the idea. Very... and the important part. What is your channel? My channel is First of Us. Uh, it, give me, you know what? Let me give you the link real quick. Because I think we have enough time. There we go. Now we have the link there. No problemo. Nope. <laughs> I, I think that may be Italian what I'm saying, but in any case. Um, where was I? Yeah, okay, so because of this part of the armor and there's some amount of contrast because of the thickness of the lines, that is, I think, tied to this idea of uh, of the way that they die, you know. So, so yeah, uh, I think 
think I can finally pass judgment because I think everything is accounted for right, I don't need to keep digging anymore. So, and I'm not gonna list every single principle, as you can notice I barely said anything for balance or... and very little for proportion, so yeah. Or emphasis. Emphasis I sit on the crystal, which I don't sit... Okay, the color scheme of it ties to wind, but in any case, yeah, let's just recap everything, right? Uh, so... The idea of being an enemy for Epic Battle Fantasy, I think easily we can see through contrast and variety, sorry, and unity through the shadows, because, you know, right side. The idea of a battle mage through the robe and the principle of movement and unity again, we can see the tropes of a mage clo mage's clothing. And uh, with the repetition on the armor, we can kind of make out the idea that it's possibly a battle mage faced combat. There's some armor there. I really wish that I could say something for the shapes and forms, but I don't know uh, if I had a feeling that I could, maybe if I did a more in-depth analysis. Uh, and also with this specific part of the armor, so with some amount of contrast there with the other lines, uh, and some amount of variety also, I suppose, we can think of the idea that uh, it ran out of air, it's close to it, right? It doesn't exactly say that it's died, died drowning, but... Well, my English friend, I won't bother you, but I hope you do well analyzing the enemies and having Epic Battle Fantasy V. Ah, muchas gracias! <laughs> so, in any case... Bye-bye! Um... Adios! <laughs> Where was I? Uh, yeah, okay, so... Let's communicate that he died uh, drowning. Ah, I didn't talk about the idea that it died, right? But I think the fact that it's... When it comes to the next part, that it's just a haunted armor of someone who died. I think it's easy to see that. And again, principle of unity. Principle of unity slash right is so strong if to help the artist. Um, so... Because of the element of space, on how the there is the... The gap there shows that this is kind of floating, this is not a living being, this is some sort something magical in some way. And finally... So, Hunt and Armor, easily, I think, tight. And finally we have the color scheme of the light green for the wind in this game, and the blue for water as tying that to the game design of this enemy casting wind and water spells. So, with all that said, uh, all parts of the vision were accounted for, so my only conclusion is this, that this is a successful work of art! Congrats! Congrats, Matt! Uh, really liked what you did here with the... I hadn't realized that before this critique, but I really like what you did with the color scheme of the wind and the water. Pretty cool. And also, this little detail that I... Also didn't stop to think about, but pretty cool also, the idea of the battle mage with the armor and the robes. Maybe I, I saw that unconsciously, let's say, but really cool to bring that to light. Congrats, Matt. Successful work of art. So, we still have a little bit more time in the stream, but uh, that's it for the art critique. We're gonna fill the time with gameplay, and so I guess for you guys on YouTube, uh, bye! Watch me on stream!